Despite warning of family and friends to stop the lonely life in the forest and come back to the city, Maddie Young a deaf and mute writer refuses and continues living her life alone. The day of the killer attack starts with Maddie cooking and exchanging messages with her friends all happy in her house. Her neighbor Sarah sends her a message that she will pass by and she responded by yes sure all excited. In the afternoon Sarah arrives, she compliments Maddie's book about how amazing and well written it is and practice the signs language with her. While they were talking, the fire alarm rang loudly, being deaf Maddie didn't notice, Sarah points her hands to let her know. They rush in, the alarm is so loud that Sarah had to close her ears. Maddie turns off the alarm and Sarah pulls out the burnt food. Maddie apologizes and explains to Sarah that the alarm is so loud because she needs to feel the vibration while she sleeps in case of a fire. After that, they spend a good time together and Sarah promises that she will come tomorrow to improve her signs language skills then she leaves Maddie's house to go back to hers. Later that evening, Sarah comes running and screaming at Maddie's window for help. Maddie couldn't see her and being completely deaf she couldn't hear her either. She keeps cleaning her kitchen while the poor terrorized Sarah was banging at the door to have her attention. The killer shoots an arrow at her back, she struggles to stay up but he came to her, put a knife several times in her stomach and kills her in cold blood. The masked killer came at the door right behind Maddie and knocked with one finger, but at his surprise Maddie didn't make any reaction. Later on, while she was writing her book, the killer slowly creeps in the house behind her and took her phone. Her friend on the video call warns her that she saw someone, but she laughed and made a sign that it must be the cat. In the next scene, Maddie receives photos of her in her laptop from her phone. She was scared and confused of the situation. She then immediately went to her door and she saw him, there standing and looking at her. All confused, she was looking at the man with green mask, while he was showing her her phone. She runs instinctively towards the open door to close it, while he was running to stop her. She made it and close all the doors left open. The battle between the two has started. The killer seems to enjoy the show while poor Maddie is terrified. She rushes to call 911 but he turns off the connection from outside and all the lights went off. Maddie won't be able to call any help. He then went to her car and flat her tires to make sure she can't escape with the car. Sadly, Maddie is trapped like a rat in her own house, alone in the forest, far from people. She couldn't call help, could not scream or talk. The only thing that comes in her mind, was to write down a note for the killer, that she didn't saw his face and she won't tell anyone. She wished that he can have mercy and leave her house. But heartless that the killer was, he showed her his face to make sure, that she saw him. He then told her, that he can get him whenever he wants but wants to play first, have fun until she wishes she is dead. All scared, she went to hide in the bathroom with a knife and a hammer in her hand. She sees a shadow, and at her surprise the killer was banging at her window, with the hand of the dead Sarah. He wanted to make sure that she saw him, and make her feel devastated and traumatized. What kind of psychopath will do such a thing? Maddie is beyond devastated at this point. She falls down and start crying, wondering why, why her, and who is that evil guy in her house, trying to kill her. After her small breakdown episode, she realizes that hiding wasn't an option. She decides to try something else. She opens the door to turn her car on from distance, in order to distract him. The noise of the car alarmed him and he went immediately to see if she was inside trying to escape. Maddie's plan wasn't actually to escape, but to go to Sarah's body, and try to find her phone in her jean. She remembers seeing Sarah putting her phone at her pocket earlier, when she was visiting her. While she was searching desperately in both pockets, the killer came running to attack her. Maddie tries to close the window but the killer has already his two hands below, and fight to open widely the window. She saw her hammer on the floor, and rapidly went to pick it up then hits him with it. The hand of the killer is badly hurt, he screams and back off. 
One point to Maddie and zero for the killer so far in the battle, but the war isn't over. The fear caused by this wildly and unthinkable behavior of the bad guy, makes her decide, that there is no other choice, than playing his game. Her next move to save her life, is to go out for the first time since the attack, and try to find a way to run away. In the next scene, the killer did the tour of the house trying to find her. He saw her running toward the forest. He shot her with an arrow but missed. Another failed attempt for the poor Maddie, that had no other choice than to run back inside the house and close the door. He shot his arrow and she falls on the floor to protect herself. He missed again for the second time. After that, her third attempt was to go out, on top of the house and throw a lamp in the bushes, in order to distract him. He saw the light and went towards it, but unfortunately for Maddie, he didn't believe that she was out there. He came right below her and shot an arrow to her leg. This time, he got her badly. She was hurt. One point to Maddie and one point to the killer. He shot again but she dodges barely, he then climbs to attack her but she was waiting for him, she grabs the arrow and she punched him in the face. He falls screaming. Well done Maddie. He kind of really deserve it. Now it's two points for Maddie and one for the killer. She was hurt and bleeding, but she locks herself in the bathroom, trying to learn how to use the arrow. In the next scene, John, Sarah's boyfriend came looking for her and started knocking at the door and shouting Sarah's name. The killer heard him, and knowing that John can beat him considering the difference of size, he decided to play a game. He acted as if he was a sheriff on duty, that received a call from a lady in distress. John didn't believe him and pick up a rock that he hides behind him. Unfortunately, Maddie knocked from inside, he got distracted, and the killer put a knife in his throat. Coward that the killer was, he waited for this perfect opportunity to strike. Before dying, John screams to Maddie to run, and he put up a fight against the killer until his last breath. Her writer brain helps her to imagine multiple ending, and the voice in her head guides her to choose the best option. She figures out that she can't run, hide or wait. If she runs, he will certainly catch her and kill her. If she waits for help, he will come and kill her and if she hides, she will die due to her injuries. So, she decides that the only thing to do was to confront him, and fight to save her life. She sees him trying to kill her cat. She goes out and shot him with the arrow. That was a brave and bold move from her, but sadly he runs to her and traps her hand in the door. He smashes her hand with his feet with pleasure, and do it over and over until the hand is totally broken. What a psycho. She is seriously injured and in pain. The killer just watches her cry without any remorse. He is full of joy thinking that he has badly injured his victim. At this point, Maddie is left with no hope. She writes down with her blood, in the glass of the door three words saying, Coward, do it. The coward killer is pissed, he picks up a piece of metal and goes to the door, starts banging strongly, so that he can break the glass and gets in. Trapped inside the house, Maddie starts writing the description of the killer in her laptop, as well as saying her goodbyes to her parents. She also adds at the end, died fighting. She grabs her knife on the floor, she can barely walk but goes to hide in the bathroom. She is weak and feeling like to pass out due to excessive bleeding from her feet and her smashed hand. He slowly gets behind her in the bath, and talks nonsense with arrogance. She could not hear him, but the biggest mistake that he makes, is to breathe loudly behind her. She knows that he is right there behind her, so she moves her head to dodge his knife, and turns rapidly to strike him with her knife. The knife is in his leg, he starts screaming while she left the bathroom. Since she cannot run, she stays in the kitchen. He follows her, but she carries a product that she puts in his eyes. He is hurt and can't see properly. She then gets up and turns on the loud alarm to bother his ears. The killer is screaming because his eyes and ears are disturbed. Oh, that hurts. Well done, Maddie, maybe this will teach him a sympathy lesson to have mercy next time.
She tries to pick up the knife, but he grabs her by the hair, and throws her to the floor. With rage, he beats her with his feet repeatedly in the stomach. Then he goes on top of her, he grabs her throat and starts to strangle her. She puts up a good fight, but he is way too strong and she is way too weak because of her injuries. He almost killed her, but she takes a screw that was near her, and put it in his neck, he bleeds out, fall down and then he dies. Finally, the battle is over, the killer is dead and Maddie survives. Maddie stays outside her house waiting for the police. They arrive and she smiles finally, for the first time since the attack. Overall, the movie was good, but one important point left out, is that we never knew why the killer was attacking people. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. Chill and enjoy movies with Chill Flex.